Today I'm going to show you step by step how to create this awesome sandstone material that you'll have available for use in all your renders. So let's get started by heading over to the shading workspace. Now that you have Blender open, make sure you go ahead to your preferences and enable the Node Wrangler add-on, just like this, just check the box here. Then for the lighting, I just uncheck Scene World and I'm using the forest and I have my sphere here. So then you'll want to press new. We'll call this red sandstone, just like so. And then now that we have our material, we'll zoom out until we find our shader. So to get started, we're going to hit shift A, search for a musgrave texture, just like this. And then we'll, with this selected, we'll press control and T, which will give us our texture coordinate and mapping. So if we control shift and left click the musgrave texture, we get a preview of what's going on when we're in the rendered preview. Then we can take this object and move it into the vector here. And so we're using object coordinates. Then I'm just going to grab these two and move them out of the way so we have more space. Then on this Musgrave texture, I'm gonna go ahead and change the scale to a one. I'm gonna change the detail to a 10, the dimension down to a one, and then the lacunarity will leave there. And this is gonna be the main mask, or the main base mask. So then I'm gonna press Shift A, I'm gonna search for a math node. Then I'm gonna plug our height into the top value here, and I'm gonna change this math node function to less than. So if we control shift and left click, every value that's less than the threshold is gonna be turned to white. So I'm going to change the threshold to a 0 0.025, which will give us something like this. Then I'll press Shift A. I'm going to search for a mixed RGB node. We're going to use this less than value as our factor. And we're going to take our height into color 2. And in color 1, I'm going to make a white. So what that does, if we control Shift and left click, is it gives us this. So currently, we have this. And then we move it over here, and we get this. It's not really factoring in much until we're going to hit Shift A, search for a map range node, just like so. Plug our color into the map range. And on this one, we're going to leave this values as default. So this is going to be our level one of detail on our sandstone. So we're going to take all of these and press Control Shift D, which will give us a second level. And then if we shift R, it'll repeat the action, which is going to be our third level of detail. So now we're just going to tweak these values on these guys a bit. So on this middle one, we're going to take the scale and move it up to a three. And then we're going to take the map range node over here and change the two maximum value on the bottom to two thirds. So if we control shift and left click the sky, it's like this, and this one's here. So then we're gonna combine them with a mix RGB. So we'll hit shift A and search for that, and mix RGB. We're going to take the map range from down here into color two, and the top one into color one, change the function or blending mode to add, and the factor to a one, which is gonna give us this cool effect. Then we're gonna do the same thing up here after we switch some values. We're gonna change the scale on this guy to a five, and we're gonna change the two maximum value to a one third. Just like so, that one's looking like this. So then we're gonna press this mix RGB, shift D, and duplicate them. Take this result into color one, and this bottom color into color two. So now if we preview this with control shift and left click, we have our base mask for the different levels of layering in the sandstone. So we're just gonna factor this into our bump. So we'll hit shift A, search for a bump node, like this. We're gonna take this color into the height, and then this normal into our shader normal. Sorry if you can hear my dogs in the background, it's slightly annoying, but oh well. We're gonna grab these, move them down. Then if we wanna stay organized, shift and right click on this right here, grab this node, and then now we're a lot more organized. So now we're gonna make it look a little bit more rocky and sandy with some noise textures. So we'll hit shift A, search for some noise textures just like this. And then we're gonna take our vector from the mapping into the noise texture, control shift to left click to preview. Then I'm gonna press shift A, I'm gonna search for a map range node again. Place that afterwards so the factor goes into the value. On this noise texture, I'm gonna change the scale up to a 10 and the detail up to a 14, which will give us this effect. Then on this map range, I'm just gonna bring the from minimum value to a 0.2 and the from maximum to a 0.8, just like this. So that's gonna give us this cool contrasty effect. So then I want two levels of detail on the noise. So I'm going to take both of these and press Control Shift D, which will duplicate them. And on this bottom noise texture, I'm going to change the scale. This one's going to be the sand up to a 250. And then I'll leave the other values exactly the same, except this two max value, I'm going to bring down to a 0.1. So if we preview this one, it looks super grainy like this, like sand. And this one's going to be our sort of bumpiness in the rock. So then to mix these together, we'll hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB just like this. We're going to take this result into color one and this into color two. But currently with the preview, it's not exactly what we want to be happening here. So we're going to hit Shift A. I'm gonna search for another map range node. I'm gonna put him up here. I'm gonna take this previous map range into the value here. And then on this map range, I'm going to bring in the from minimum to a 0.35. If we preview this, 
the max to a 0.75 like this, the contrast is going to be quite significant. And then we're going to plug this into the factor. So now if we control shift and left click, we have this going on, which is a super cool effect. There's some sand here and there's some rock going elsewhere. And it's a really cool thing we have going here. So now we're going to factor this into some bump, but we don't want it everywhere. So we need to mix it again. So we're gonna hit shift A, search for a mixed RGB. We'll plug this color into color two. And then for color one, we'll make a black. So if we control shift and left click, currently it's looking the exact same and we don't want that. So we're gonna press shift A. I'm gonna search for another map range node. And we're gonna be using this guy as the factor for the map range. So the value right here. Then we're gonna change the two minimum to a 0 0.05, just so that we make sure that there's some sand everywhere. Then we'll take this result into the factor here, which will give us this cool, nice bumpiness. So now that we've done that, we're gonna stay a little bit more organized, and I'm actually gonna take all this on top, other than this extra mix node, and grab them and move them over here. And then I'll grab these guys and move them a little bit down, just like this, so that we have some more space. Nice. So then I'm going to duplicate this bump node, so select them, press Shift D, place them afterwards. Then I'm going to take this color into the height and then the strength down to a 0.25, just like this. So now we control Shift D, we have this as our bump. Nice. So we're also going to want to factor this into displacement later. However, this material does look really nice in Eevee, so you don't have to do the displacement part if you don't want to. But I'll go ahead and show you how to do that if you want it to look slightly more realistic. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to search for a map range node here. I'm going to take this color into the value here. Then I'm going to duplicate this map range with Shift D and take this previous one down here into the value for this one. So then on this top one, we're going to change the two max value to a 0.25 and on the bottom one, the two max to a 0.75. So what this is doing is we have this guy and this guy. They're pretty much the same bumps, but we're going to be combining them for the displacement. So I'll press Shift A, search for a mix RGB like this. We'll take this result up here into color one and this one into color two and change the blending mode to add like this and the factor to a one. Then we'll want to check the clamp. So if we can shift and left click, we have this as our displacement mask. So then we just have to hit shift A, search for a displacement node, like so, and plug this color into the height. We'll plug this in later. I just wanted to show you how to do that right now because it's going to be plugged in up here to the material output eventually. So now we're going to come over here and do some color. And to do that, I'm going to press shift A. I'm actually going to search for a mix RGB node. This is where we're going to have our colors, and we're going to be using this as the blending for the colors. So we're actually going to modify this a little bit because it's a little bit too dark right now. So I'm going to search for a couple math nodes here. I'm going to grab this guy, and then I'm going to duplicate him with Shift D. So if I plug this color into the value of the first one, and then this value into the second one, like so, this value will go into the factor of the mix RGB. Nice. So I'm going to change this first math node to multiply. I'm going to change the value on him to a 1.25. And what this does is it's just going to brighten up all of the already sort of bright values in here because it currently is darker and this is going to help us get it more contrast in the node. Then we'll leave this other one add on a 0.5 because we're going to be able to adjust this manually if we want to. So then for the colors, we're going to be changing these to the red sandstone. So this color one, I'll go ahead and give you a hex value for that. I'm going to be using an EB7 F6A, just like this, which is going to give us this. Then this color 2, I'm going to be switching to a 964, 62E, just like this. Nice, so now we have our color. And obviously, this is that's what this add node is for. We can decrease the contrast between them, or we can increase and towards one side, things like that. I'm going to leave it on a 0.5, though. Then we can press Shift A and search for a hue saturation node, just like this. So we can change the hue and stuff as we want. If we want it to look a little bit more like sandy, we can switch it to like a point, maybe like a 0.5. 0.55, something like that, and then decrease saturation, maybe increase value, things like that. If we want it to look a little bit more sandy, we can obviously play with this however we want. So now if I can chose this and left click the shader, I'm gonna set these back to their default values, 0.5, one and one, just like this. Take this color into the base color, and we currently have this, and it's starting to look really nice. So now I'm gonna take this roughness and bring it up to a 0.75. So if you're using Eevee, then you are pretty much done right now. I'm just going to show you a few things you can do if you're in cycles, and it might also apply to EV. So then if you press N here on your keyboard, you'll get this side panel, or you can go ahead and press this arrow key. You're going to switch from displacement to displacement and bump, and you have to be in cycles to use the displacement. 
But then we can take this displacement value and plug it in up here. And that's gonna displace our mesh. Obviously, the more detailed you want it to be, the more you have to subdivide your mesh. You can obviously do adaptive subdivision, things like that, but I'll just show you how to do it without that. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and take the scale down to a 0.025, because it was affecting it way too much. And as you can see now, we have it actually displacing the mesh a little bit. You can obviously up this to like a 0.1 if you want. To me, that's a little bit, a little bit too much, but I'm gonna leave this at a 0 0.0, probably like as a 0 0.05 for this material. And now that we've done that, feel free to adjust any parameters as you want, the color, bump, displacement, etc. make it your own. And since we just created sandstone, you may also be interested in creating some other nature materials, such as like water or mud or anything else like that. You can find those in a playlist right up here. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one.